This is Andy from HowEFIWorks.com. And today I want to talk about analyzing drag race data using Megalog Viewer HD. We're going to need a few basic sensors on the car that you may or may not have now. The first one is front wheel speed sensors and matching rear wheel speed sensors. This can also be drive shaft sensors, whatever you might happen to have. We can correct for that. And a two or three axis accelerometer on the car. These things are commonly supplied to the Arduino guys that are making these uh, drones, that sort of thing from home. And they come for about five, six bucks on Amazon these days. And you can generally bring them right into a zero to five volt ADC input. So it can be done very inexpensively. I want to note that some of these sensors may be banned on race day, depending on your racing class, but it certainly can be used on test day. We'll be basically using engine and wheel speed data to generate and blend speed, location, and acceleration. We're going to make the basic assumption that your car has enough power to pretty much blow off the rear tires almost anywhere on course, and that you have some sort of power adder whether it be nitrous or turbo or whatever, that you can control the power on the car. Most of these cars do have trans brakes when you get to this level. And most everything is timed from the time you release the trans brake. So here's a quick trace of RPM versus time. You can see the trans brake holding the RPM at say 3000 RPM or 3500. And then once you release it, the motor jumps up, climbs up through first gear, hits second gear, and then possibly third gear. In this particular case, this is a two speed. So what you're seeing is the torque converter slip. But in the old days, pretty much all you really knew was you knew you shifted from first to second, and that you were turning about 7,500 RPM when you hit the lights, you think, and the track timers will tell you that you did it in seven seconds, for example. You didn't really have the exact trace. You may have a telltale on your tachometer that you can see that you pulled 7,450 RPM or whatever it was, but other than that, you had very little detail. Data loggers have changed the entire sport. What I'm going to do here is add what I'm calling drag race vehicle speed sensor front in white and drag race vehicle speed sensor rear in red. And you can see right when you release the trans brake, the rear tire started going. A little bit later, you notice that the front one came online. This particular car only has like six wheel speed sensor magnets on it. So it takes it a moment to hit the first magnet. But once they're going up the track, you can see that the rear tire is spinning slightly more than the front as far as velocity goes. Right when he hits second gear, you can see these spread just a little bit as the rear tire squirms. And on out the back door, you can see that the front and rear wheel speed sensor are pretty much lock sync. You can also see when he backs out of the throttle at the far end that the rear tire slowed down quite a bit. Now I'm going to add in the accelerometer. Basically what this thing is, is it measures how hard the car is pulling or, for example, pushing against your spine, the seat trying to run right through your back. The harder the acceleration, the more it feels like you've been shot out of a cannon. In our particular case, this car is maxing out at about two and a half Gs. The scale is from zero to 2.75 and the speed sensors are maxed out from zero to 175 mile an hour. You can see how nice and smooth the car accelerates. It does start tapering off at about two and a half seconds when it hits second gear and it pops you in the back again and then on out the back end. The dotted line is 1.375 Gs. So you're still pulling every bit of a G as you go through the eighth mile. You may or may not remember from physics class in the old days of high school or college that given an acceleration, you can figure out just how fast the car is going at any given moment. In this particular case, the units in green are drag race feet per second. 
if I recalibrate feet per second to miles per hour and lay it in here with the same scale of zero to 175 mile an hour, you can see that all three are pretty well synced depending on how much tire slip you have until you get to about three quarter of the way down the track, in which case at that point, they're all three really well synced. Again, from physics, if you have the acceleration and the speed, you can also track where you are on the track. I call it drag race track location. With that, I can create a formula that basically says, give me a spike when you hit the 60 foot mark, one at 330, and again at the eighth mile. This gets really handy for figuring out based on time where you have a problem along the scale or in location on the track. So you can do back-to-back -back testing, even without the track timers running to say, does this set up this change I make? Does it make it faster to the 330 foot mark or 60 foot? When drag racing, the timers start when you break the second light. Well, it takes a little bit of time from when you release the trans brake until you break the light. It's in the neighborhood of two to three tenths of a second, depending on how fast the car is. But the timers start, in this case, about two tenths of a second later, and you get to the eighth mile at whatever time that is. And I'll show you a bit more of that in a moment. Now that we have speeds measured by the front wheel speed sensor, the rear, and the acceleration, we can run any math we want on tire speed compared to say front to rear, which is the green in total differential. So you can see that this car is running, our scale is zero to 10. So it's running about three mile an hour faster on the rear wheel speed until you get near the end of the track. Or as a percentage, it's a little bigger percent out of the hole but anytime you have a traction problem, you can see this one jump up and this one jump up. Also out here, you can see the first to second shift or possibly bumps in the track. So I've added the trans brake. This is the rev limiter coming in and out. You can see when the driver released the trans brake, he also brought in the nitrous and ramped it up to about two seconds as the max nitrous. This could be multiple stages of nitrous. It'll be more of a a stair step at that point, or it could possibly be boost coming on the boost controllers on the turbo. Also notice if you had a traction problem, say right here and you wanted to correct, you could pull out just a little bit of nitrous to get through this mark. And I'll show you an example in a couple of slides. All I've done is moved the things that we use far tuning. In this case, we've added timing where he runs about 30 degrees timing. And just as he releases the button, he pulls the timing down to about eight degrees and then ramps it out to about 10 and a half degrees. But if he had traction problems right here, he could play with his nitrous curve or his timing curve. Our goal in doing this sort of thing is having a nice smooth transition. Maximize the acceleration and tire slip based on what we're looking at on these. We want a nice smooth curve on both of these traces. Any time, for example, that's green is you're getting close to blowing off the tire, or if it's down, you probably could have added a little more power. The next trace I've added, I call drag race gear ratio overall. What I've done is taken the RPM divided by the wheel speed in a constant to give me the rear end ratio as he gets out of the power at the end of the track. You can see that this torque converter has a lot of slip coming out of the hole and then slowly locks up when he shifts to second. You can also see as he hit his shift, you get a nice smooth curve in the acceleration. You can tell if you shift it a little bit early or a little bit late if these lines don't match up on either side of the shift. Now what I've added is the left-right accelerometer. Basically what this does is tells me that the car is going sideways or not, at least a little bit. As he comes out of the hole, he's nice and smooth out to about two seconds. Then at some point he lost a little bit of traction. It's right here. And you can also see he steered the car to try to keep it straight. And then just about got it straight when it hit second gear and the car jumped sideways on him again. If you, you can see he drove out of it very cleanly because his acceleration didn't drop. 
But if you compare maybe 10 or 20 runs and the car always jumps to the same side on every time he shifts to second gear or a lot, you probably, if you get into this situation, might want to play with tire staggered a little bit to get that out. Uh, tire pressure slightly, pull a quarter pound of air out of one tire to see what it does. Whatever it takes to keep the driver from having to make corrections and stay off the wall. These happen to be the curves that you use in a mega squirt on a nitrous car. Uh, basically, what we're doing is here's the duty cycle where just as he releases the trans brake through three seconds, he comes out with about 35% duty cycle. And then as you go up the track by one second, he's at 58% duty cycle. And at two seconds, he's at 100. It's the combination of this nitrous and fuel solenoid is controlling the air fuel ratio as he goes up the track. Also at the bottom, you'll see his timing retard. This particular tuner is coming out of the hole at a fixed timing. And then what he does is pulls timing as you go down the track. But again, if you had traction problems at 1.2 seconds, you might want to put a dot here and pull out just a little bit of timing to regain traction for a more consistent drive. Here's an example of a car, same car, different track. And you can see where he pulled the wheels. The reason I can tell that is the red line, all of a sudden, which happens to be in our case, the vehicle speed sensor front stayed constant for some period of time. That implies that that tire sitting in the air, when he finally did set it back down, it caught back up. But his acceleration was nice and smooth, so he never had to lift. It never got high enough for it to be a problem. You can also see in the tire, what appears to be slip is really because that front tire is not accelerating. Here's another example where in this particular case, the driver blew off the tires at about one second. You can see where he got tire slip. He also got out of the nitrous, gained traction where these numbers are coming back online, and he attempted to bring on the nitrous again, but instantly blew off the tires. Notice when he blows off the tires, how the acceleration drops to almost nothing, comes back in when he got into the power, but then again blew off the tires, and he finally got out completely for a half second or so, and rolled back into the power, but he did not reapply the nitrous. But if you happen to see that on one or two runs, you always blew off the tire at whatever time, you could adjust the nitrous down to keep that from being a problem. A, a basic physics lesson again. This is again our acceleration curve, and it's the area under the curve that you really want to maximize to get a fast time. This happens to be that run, same same surface, but he blew off the tires by having a little too much nitrous in the car. And you can see how much less area there is under the curve. Let me go back and forth. There's a good run and a run with traction problems. This particular one has a lot more area under the curve. Megalog Viewer HD has a feature where you can drag the mouse from right when he launched the car all the way to the eighth mile mark, and you can see the totals and highlights in the bottom right corner. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You really can't do this in the software. I did it with copy paste, but you can see the acceleration in G's. His average acceleration was 1.626 for that entire run, and his maximum acceleration was 2.567, which happened right about here. That is an extremely fast run. If you notice, the track timers are showing a max of 4.476 seconds, and that's in the eighth mile. Again, this highlight is just giving you, on the averages, it's the area under the curve. All I've done here is change the views to what the tuner may want to see, which at the top is the basics of where you are on the track in green, the track timers in white, and RPM in yellow. The next trace down, you can see the trans bike where it releases, the acceleration comes on, and you can also see the three wheel speed sensors. In this trace, we can see the tire slip and notice how nice and consistent this thing is. And at the top end, how there's almost no slip at all. That was an extremely fast run. Again, we can drag from left to right on a run and get the totals and highlights on the right. Anything you want to see?
what I've done is zoomed in, and we can see that the track timers in this particular run were 4.813 is what I'm estimating as the maximum. And the blue circle is the Excel maximum of 2.139 on this track, which was happened right about here. And you can see the three wheel speed sensors as he drove out the far end. We're right at 159 mile an hour on all three of them. All I've done is put gray in the area that we're actually looking for, and that is your Excel G's average. I haven't really given the details for this particular set of slides. The reason is it varies a little bit from car to car and data logger to data logger, but I can probably pretty much set this up on almost anybody's data logs, provided you have wheel speed sensors, at least either a front or a rear, I prefer both, and accelerometers, which is what we verify everything with. Should you wanna contact me for setting this all up on your car, just contact me at whittlebeast at gmail.com. And I'd also like to thank my friends at tunerstudio.com. These are the developers of Mega Log Viewer HD. And should you feel motivated to help me stay motivated, you can always send a donation to paypal.me slash howeifiworks. Thanks for watching.